So good morning once again from our side. So it is Tatiana Okotina who lives in Lille in France and my name is Christine Kain. I live in Duisburg, Germany and we are happy to give a lecture today about expectations of customers, consumers and what will come up uh, in the future. Future trends, societal trends, technology developments and the impact on marketing and strategy. <coughs> These are big questions. And we will not make it to give all answers in 30 or 40 minutes. We want to tease a little bit some ideas how marketeers react on the challenges which come up in future. I hope everybody understands me in terms of loudness. OK, fine. So actually, uh, we have a certain situation, one big trend is the democratic, uh, demographic change. And I used to work for a big retailer called Metro Group in the past. And the former CEO of Metro Group, uh, Kerber, he gave an interview which, where he showed the dramatic of the change of the demographic change in the future and the impact on the enterprises and how to meet these challenges. Uh, he said, most certainly, if the birth rate does not change, there will be only around 50 million people living in Germany in 2050, 050. Then there will be just as many people in Germany who are over 80 as there are inhabitants who are under 20. And then he said, we are like someone jumping out of a skyscraper, aus dem Hochhaus springen, just flying past the 28th floor and saying, good luck so far. The window of opportunity to find an answer to that is slowly closing. So he was really very dramatic about the situation, which is, of course, a German thing. We have different societies in the world, and I'm not sure where you are from, and if the let's say population will change in a different way, but this is, uh, was the, the, the situation, the challenge in Germany. And of course, if you go to the hypermarket today, the pet department for animals are bigger than the baby departments. And this must give a pause for thought. Being relevant means for elderly people to find quality products good readability in the stores, El elderly staff who speak the languages of the customers and who are not being discriminated, while health topics or things related to the body are seen as a deficit in the communication. So it's not only about the product, it's also about the communication and about the service. I like the sample of readability of products in the stores which, what is the difference between these two tomato marks? I had this problem already. Um, the right one is hot, <laughs> the left one is not hot. Um, yeah, I bought the hot one, but I wanted the not hot one. <laughs> so, <laughs> the interesting thing is, you are definitely not older than 60, <laughs> if I'm right. <laughs> I wanted to refer this problem to my husband, who on a regular basis brings the right-hand side, and we have so many hot tomato marks, I don't know where to put them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring them here and try to give it to you. <laughs> but this is uh, the readability of the products. And, and all these phenomena, they have a major impact on the consumers feeling relevant. Because I say, I bring, buy 10 times the wrong product, so I go, don't go there anymore. So the relevancy is about, of course, big topics which concern a former CEO of Metro Group, which is one of the largest retailers and wholesalers group. But it's also, uh, uh, this is a question of strategy and understanding where the journey is going. It's uh, also a huge impact uh, on the marketing people who have to cope with all these challenges and to give good communication and to get reconnected with the consumers again. So the question is, how do enterprises plan and predict the future needs of the customers and consumers? Old trend reports 
reported a value ranking index like nature as one of the highest values in 2018. This value trend suddenly changed in 2020 when the COVID came up, so the highest value was health, Gesundheit. And it changed again in 2022 when the war situation turned up in security. So we do not know how to deal with that, and the future is not predictable. And priorities change depending on economical and ecological framework conditions. The way how people deal with planning, understanding developments differs from industry to industry and from culture to culture. Maybe do you know this uncertainty, avoidness that uh, Germans fear a lot of things. They want to avoid uncertainty. While, uh, please don't take me wrong, some other cultures are a bit more relaxed about uh, not planning future, but reacting on it. So it's becoming very complex. And subsequently, we show specific scenarios of trends and opportunities for individuals and how enterprises meet these. I only give some small trends like connectivity, which is not a small trend. I will give a small insight. Of course, uh, always on, always being connected is a, a, a huge trend. It's a mega trend. And the connectivity in terms of technology is also a major mega trend. At the same time, people counter-react on that and say, i gone fishing. So they want to be absorbed, to be offline. Mobility is a huge trend. And it's not only the car mobility. It's simply the, the place where I work from where I travel, where I have spare time. So this is my husband's place, uh, not at home, but it's on a nice island, which is called Norderney. <laughs> Probably no one of you know, knew during that time that he was working and doing calls from this cool house from morning <laughs> till evening. And he wondered suddenly that people wanted to sit along at his table to drink coffee. And he asked me, why are they drinking coffee? I have a call now. Yeah. <laughs> so the fluent spaces and the sharing economy, which is not only car industry, but also the life last mile concept to have car sharing, bike sharing, or whatever, is a big, uh, let's say, influencing factor. And of course, individualism is growing. Mass customization is the industrial answer and reaction on that, how to shape things according to individuals based on an industrial approach. This is an <coughs> overview about the Zukunftsinstitut. And uh, no can, nobody will be able to read right now. But there are so many mega trends and so many subtrends and value rankings which change all the time, that the world is becoming very complex and indeed a huge challenge for marketeers. I don't need to give the answer now. I only give the intro. But uh, this is somehow a question, where is the journey to go? And how do brands react on how to reconnect with their consumers to be close in communication and to make things more relevant in the future? And for this part, I welcome Tatiana Okutina. We know each other from Moscow, from Paris, and we yes. meet for the first time here in Mülheim. Yes. <laughs> so welcome to us yes. to give you your insights. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think that you say it's perfect. Uh, um, I'm Russian, uh, but I live in France in seven years. And, uh, I'm um, starting my activity as a marketing and uh, customer experience consultant. But before, like for more than four, four, 15 years, I was uh, managing teams uh, through Russia, through uh, several uh, ex-Soviet uh, uh, Repu republics, like Kazakhstan, Ukraine, uh, Belarus. I launched a brand in China. And uh, I uh, was leading uh, the inspirational uh, program in Le Rome, in France, for some years. And we'll talk here about something, some projects we did. And uh, I am passionate about motorbiking, motorbikers, and windsurfing. Uh, so the first topic will be about connectivity and artificial intelligence, how at Le Rome Merlin we uh, used uh, artificial intelligence uh, in order to um, deliver relevant campaigns. 
and uh, relevant journeys. Uh, I'm sure that almost all, all of you know uh, this uh, funnel, yeah, AEDA model, and I discovered this owing to you, preparing for this lecture, that it appeared in the late 19th century by Elias uh, Lewis, uh, who was showing how to write efficiently messages alongside, along all the customer journey. And I believe that we still use it in marketing, and I believe that it's really an efficient and still actual model, though there is a problem. now. Uh, literally, each of us uh, is confronted each day with thousands of m uh, messages. So how should I deliver a relevant message and emerge in, uh, within thousands of messages? That's why today I would like to show you how we tried, really tried, to emerge in. Uh, and we'll show you the th three business cases, follow on marine, but not only. Uh, just think about this number. This is the number of uh, the messages or content shared every day in the world, according to the report of uh, HubSpot. So, it means, sorry, uh, I will come back. Uh, it means that uh, it's, there is another report, I didn't show the figures. It means that each person sees 10,000 messages per day. If we make some calculations, it, it was not me who did it by uh, others, Harvest Group in Paris. Uh, it, they would say that uh, a person would notice like 500 messages maybe. How many of messages will it remember? They say that it would be between 50 and 60. So how should we emerge within this huge amount of messages every, everyone is confronted every day? And what is interesting to say is that, uh, yes, there are a lot of messages, and still almost half of the brand content does not deliver the message. It means that the customers don't see these messages, they don't uh, feel these messages meaningful to them, and uh, so they don't get it. it it's, it's useless to them. And however, Two-thirds of consumers say we do need relevant uh, journeys. We do want them. So we do not we do want brands to talk to, that, to us, but in a relevant, meaningful way to us. So that is a huge question. <laughs> How do we do it? So what um, I would like to talk to you about, it's about uh, a project in uh, Leroy Marin, which we launched, launched in 2016, and we started to use artificial intelligence in 2019, and we are still using it with our provider. Uh, the question it was, okay, there is a brand awareness, uh, there is a brand consideration, there is a conversion. It's a brand-centric model. But when does a home improvement uh, project uh, appear in the mind of the consumer? Actually, when do we want to repair our kitchen? Do we go immediately online to see the Milan, the house? No, we just start to have annoying talks of our wife or our husband. I don't like my quick kitchen. I, would, I, would, I want a spacious kitchen. Or we are going to have a new project, a newborn is coming. So we need to prepare a room. Or maybe a spring is coming and I want to, have, uh, to embellish my terrace. But it's still something here which is emerging. It's not emerging online. The brands don't see that. So we decided to make a semantic analysis of everything we could via artificial intelligence to understand what is inspiration. How does a project uh, appear in the minds of people? And how can Le Romilly emerge in this uh, pre-shopping experience with this brand content to be useful and to be relevant and to appear as legitimate as a home improvement brand. So I try to make some schematic things knowing that I can't uh, share all the things, so it will be really like, um, mostly like a model approach. Um, first, uh, at artificial uh, intelligence, by the way, we uh, run the machine every year because every year trends can change. For example, because of COVID, there is a new trend uh, of uh, biking. So a home improvement project uh, is about how do I store a bike at home? Or how do I store a bike in a flat? And these are really like uh, weak uh, trends we uh, can perceive by artificial um, um, intelligence, but you don't see it like a huge trend yet. But still, you have to capture it and to respond to that. So uh, artificial intelligence made a semantic analysis of hundred, uh, hundreds of URLs to uh, evaluate uh, the offer 
what, are, what is offered to the consumer in terms of home improvement for kitchen repair, for living room, etc., etc. <clears throat> it analyzed the, the key searches on Google. So what do people look for? What do users want to know? And it evaluated uh, the topics and the talks on forums and in social media. <clears throat> what are the questions people ask? What are the topics which generate more engagement? So we got like uh, Excel sheets of many, 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 many thousands of keywords. And the second step was uh, creating semantic uh, uh, fields, like trying to cluster it a bit. And we got still like uh, a dozen of um, clusters, and we tried to group them in a huge clusters to get a strategic vision. And we uh, checked our findings uh, via a qualitative, uh, um, let's say, it's not, it wasn't even a focus group. It was just like qualitative interviews with different kinds of people to understand how they perceive an inspiration and how do they need to inspire before they launch in repair or before they launch in decorating a new home. The third uh, step was to structure all that so that it's something clear and you can see every step and understand. So this inspiration is so abstract. So uh, what do I get for that as brand? And what specifically should I do to capture the person? And uh, the, third, uh, the fourth one was uh, we re uh, wrote uh, the content strategy. So we really selected uh, the topics of content for every year, for every profile of the customer for every uh, home improvement project we want to uh, develop, which is priority to their husband, <coughs> and what should be a media strategy uh, aligned with that, and what should be uh, the developments in the UX design for our uh, own uh, media. So this is the thing I really uh, uh, doubted to share because it's uh, finally finding, so it's like a know-how, but try to make it really very schematic. So finally, what uh, we found out, uh, owing to artificial intelligence, is that inspiration a journey can be split in, uh, segmented in uh, three key stages. Uh, the first stage <coughs> is something which no normally we think about inspiration when we talk about inspiration. It's a dream or escape. So either people just dream about something, and it will take completely a completely another example of Florence. Let's say that everyone in this room says, I would like to go to Florence, it's nice, but still it remains like a dream. Okay, it would be nice, but I'm not planning this this year because I have to do, to do that and that. I don't have uh, enough uh, job holidays whatsoever. <clears throat> but still, it's nice to see some content on Instagram and Pinterest and magazines, it's fine. So our question as brands is always, what should I do? to emerge in this stage and to convert the person to the second stage where the person starts to, ah, thinking maybe to plan a trip to Florence and maybe to uh, look for some um, ideas or some uh, places to stay or for some sightseeing or some uh, discussing with friends. Maybe, maybe we could go on May holidays to Florence. So what should the brand offer here to uh, uh, give this stimulation to think about the visit to Florence. And the last, uh, so, uh, the, the, sorry, the name uh, I would give is examining the project. And the last one is passing to action. It's not buying because we are, it's still an aspiration phase. Buying is already in the marketing funnel. But it's uh, when I get more information. I uh, maybe check, check like, uh, uh, for curiosity, some tickets online, uh, or I maybe check some booking com and uh, uh, Airbnb to think where it would be and we, where we might stay. And only then our uh, goal is to lead the person to this conversion funnel, which everyone knows we want that the brand emerges as the legitimate that you will buy your trip with uh, our brand. So not Roberlin, but another one. <coughs> If you apply it to our practical case, uh, we did, did this uh, schematic uh, modeling and we analyzed it through our four main personas, which we know, and two of them, by the way, are uh, responding to this demograph demographical shift, and their needs are much, much different, not because they are elder, but because they have more money. So they are more uh, demanding on service and quality of service and quality of products. So. 
it's really very interesting to see each segment that uh, there are many, many learnings about that. So concretely, we had to answer at each uh, stage for each persona, okay, what is the kind of inspiration is most, most desirable for this person? Where does this person get inspiration from? Instagram, Pinterest, uh, TV uh, programs, showrooms, uh, stores, uh, architecture, whatsoever. What kind of personalization is needed in the second uh, stage? Because here I'm speaking about myself already. I want to imagine this in comparison to myself, according to my needs and my tastes. So what criteria do they apply to evaluate a feasibility of project? Because one of the problems is to make person believe that it is feasible, make person believe that he can make it, that he will be uh, led through this uh, journey with the brand, or that he has all the knowledge necessary, all uh, into education uh, information, or into the consultation, etc., to make it him or herself. And, and the third stage, the question would be, uh, what is important in products, in service? Are they looking for uh, premium uh, products or are they looking for accessible products? Are they looking for exclusive service or are they, are they looking just for a delivery? And so on and so on and so forth. So we did that, which allowed us finally to develop uh, a huge work uh, along all these uh, topics that I'm going to discover. That's why it started in 2018, because it's like a huge, huge holistic approach where we improve every touch point. So first we started with content, and every year we have this uh, focus of the main trends of the year per month, and we know in which month we should talk about which topic. And uh, it's never related to the sales, because the demand is born earlier than the sales starts, because there is always a gap that a person, I mean, we don't speak about uh, Catastrophe where you have, uh, you have a tap, um, um, a water tap which is out of order. But I'm speaking about really proje uh, projects. You take time to, to before you buy. So we uh, developed each year. We make topics and we define the content we should develop. And it's like 15,000 of content developed uh, every, every year, uh, which should be useful, inspiring, and educating. Uh, the second. Uh, uh, let's call it segment or the second field we work in is uh, earned and uh, paid media. We select the key. Uh, oh, sorry, earned and uh, I was I was wrong. It was um, earned and uh, owned media. It's a mistake here. Sorry. Select key earned and owned media for posting or publishing our content because. Uh, if you understand the journey, you know that maybe you should not uh, place your content everywhere, but you have to select. Like for some uh, people, it will be Instagram. For others, it will be Facebook. For other ones, it will be uh, Google search. And uh, we, uh, it means that you have adopted this to the format of each platform. Of course, you know it. And the third one is owned media. We uh, reworked the um, structure of our website to guide uh, people through these uh, journeys that we learned from uh, artificial intelligence. So we knew how they do the people inspire. Do they inspire by color? Do they inspire by the space and uh, square meters? Do they inspire by the materials, wood, uh, cement, etc., concrete, etc.? And uh, we created scenarios from one touch point to another to generate really a converting pathway to lead him to the action. Normally for us, an action is uh, either we get a lead that we then contact again and uh, we try to convert him, or it's concretely um, a visit to uh, the store and uh, demand of an estimation of the works. So the results are quite good, really. Like in uh, one or two years, we uh, it, it was a, a steady growth. We uh, uh, shifted from uh, a brand which was perceived as a repair brand uh, to the brand for the home improvement and inspiration for the home. And uh, we uh, have more knowledge now how to make tailored uh, journeys leading the user from one stage to another and not make just several contents and then uh, they would not be linked and there would be like a patchwork, uh, which uh, allows us to have high KPIs for advertising campaigns and for organic media. And uh, which allows us also to use the content to lead, genera um, to lead, to generate leads and to activate leads. 
my personal joy is that I saw just with one example that just in one year we managed to grow on Pinterest account from this less than 3 million in July to uh, 10 million uh, 12 months later. And it was like amazing that you really see how just using the right topics that people are looking for, <laughs> keywords, um, format, of course, the like quality of the content, you can uh, lead quite um, remarkable results. Uh, I would like to check the time. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, a bit, uh, I'm a bit off. So uh, the other one is uh, not the project I uh, manage, but it's the project I would like to share with you. Uh, it was quite an inspiration for me. Everyone knows that before, uh, during COVID, uh, there were a lot of live streamings, mostly in China. Everybody wanted to live stream to make some shopping because the stores were closed. But the problem was that you have to invest a lot of time to plan that, uh, and still the, out, um, the output was quite weak because people use this like a webinar. They listen to your product demonstration, but they didn't buy. And I find this um, uh, project, which is a startup, uh, interesting to share with you. How did I know about that? It's NVIDIA we have worked at before. It's a digital and home appliance company. They uh, they are a leading company in Russia, and they're really great. Uh, have the best people from all the world who uh, manage this company. And they uh, decided to try this startup with a company which is called ISO. Uh, I don't know how to. I can do it. Mm -hmm. We scroll down the eyes on. What's the difference between the um, normal live streaming we know and uh, what they offered? When the person is online at home because it's COVID, uh, the person uh, could select a picture or the product page uh, they like. And then there was a button which uh, invited to uh, initiate a call just to ask for a, uh, maybe they skipped it, but it will be repeated again. I guess there was one. Now, like he takes an appointment, he wants to call me. Uh, the salesperson in the store is available. It's a true salesperson in the store who serves uh, true people in the store. But in that case, COVID, the store is uh, closed, but the, by the sales staff is inside. Uh, and they walk you through the store. In that case, I give you the body shop example in Russia. But uh, for in video, I did it by myself. I just called them to see how it works. Because it's just a, a button. You just uh, push the button uh, close to your um, a product card, push the button, and either the consultant is available Im immediately or you see the timing when he's going to call you. And uh, it's like a video chat, but still you have an individual uh, consultation about your problem. He shows you uh, a washing machine, a TV set, he speaks about, uh, he answers to your questions. And uh, I find it really interesting because it's not a virtual thing. It's a true store, true people who work for this company, who serve offline customers and virtual online customers. Uh, of course, the brands pay a, 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 a fee, and I don't know how the mechanics, how it works. Uh, but I also liked that there is a, um, a connection to the data. So there are uh, data wrappers generated by the system. And I liked uh, the, the, the thing that is with an API. Is, is, it seems that it's connected easily to the, to the site. But why did I want to show it? Uh, because I loved the results for NVIDIA. And uh, this is a company which takes results really seriously because it's uh, a, a company which reports uh, to the investment board and to the shareholders. So in uh, uh, th this was a test in 2020. This company is also the, still uh, iZone. I know that they are developing the activities in Europe. But just to give you a, a hint, 50,000 session in uh, seven and five months, not bad in COVID time, 500 consultants, uh, every fifth call uh, completed with a transaction, which is 10 times more than a conversion rate uh, online. So I thought that uh, really technologies, if they are smartly uh, combined with the true human uh, interaction and it's relevant for the customer, it can really deliver something really meaningful to the, uh, to the customer. And finally, this uh, kind of service became a standard for Russia. It's less developed now because uh, also, a lot of international brands uh, left uh, the market for known reasons, but uh, it's still there. And the last case is uh, about uh, how we, uh, different technologies, which I even didn't know yet two years ago, uh, helped us to uh, uh, face the challenge to deliver more and more and more and more content. 
actually, if we have uh, so many part, uh, so many journeys, four personas, uh, we have to deliver 15,000 content every year, and we cannot grow in number of persons, how do we do? So of course, what do we do? We are asked uh, how can uh, technologies help us? And uh, it's a, it was a huge mix of things, and I'm sure that you are much more specialist in that field than I am, but I would like to give you a feedback as a marketeer how we use it. We took um, a dump, which was a project uh, for a long run, but it launched us last year, uh, that's a, uh, digital asset management. We, our work as marketeers was to put uh, the um, uh, rules on right management, copyright management by geography, by channel, et cetera, et cetera, by duration. And we had to write rules for indexation. Which tags do I need in the DAM to be able to find it for my campaign, for my customer journey? So it's not <laughs> technical vision of uh, the co uh, reference, uh, pick, uh, color, et cetera. We, we don't need like red. We just we need red Bordeaux or red wine, because we need to uh, link it to some style, which is Bohem. So it's much more sophisticated than the technical indexation uh, of PIMP, for example. Then, uh, of course, we had to implement uh, dyna um, dynamic uh, creative optimization tools, because we needed some automatic templates uh, where just the visual would change, but all the rest would stay. And uh, of course, we would need 3D uh, providers to be able to make a 3D uh, correction of uh, the content we have already to reuse it, to change the color, to change a product, etc. And uh, we had to design uh, key scenarios uh, of communication, um, of communication, obviously. So it's just an example. Uh, this is the image that a client would find on Pinterest because it's spring, you know, terrace, we want to go outside. Uh, then if the person clicks on uh, this picture on Pinterest, it comes to, and Pinterest is a good point because people are already engaged. They are already in the second phase of inspiration. Uh, it, it, the person comes to the website and it can get, uh, he can get more information, more educational input, uh, understand the benefits and uh, the peculiarities of the project. And then either he can go for some editorial or uh, select some projects, or maybe the person skips here and abandons the site. The site is also possible. He doesn't have time. There is a call, etc. Uh, the, uh, uh, at the same time, we communicate to another client who uh, saw another thing on uh, Instagram, a quick kitchen, because this person was uh, interested in uh, kitchen uh, content before and it liked it several times. Uh, we lead it to the, him to the site, uh, and the site you will see some uh, uh, basic technical idea of the, of the project, and either his balance he here because it's complicated, or uh, maybe he will look a bit more, but even if he skips and he abandons, we retarget him later with a promotion on the card. And it means that we as uh, marketing teams, we have really to deliver like thousands, thousands, thousands of content in a very accelerated mode, and that's how technologies helped us. So yes, we do know that technologies help, but there are some tricky points. One of the tricky points is really um, to uh, be able uh, to implement it and uh, to ensure a good operations for marketeers, because we are creatives, and sometimes technologies, we don't like it because it's too technical. We like creative concepts, uh, think from the scratch, and here you have to take already something to reuse it, uh, to update it, uh, to indexate it, uh, to think of the rules, uh, the, the, the law, the rights. It's not the thing that we love. So there is a, a, some bosom which is um, born in the, in the spirit of people because they say, I want to create, I don't want to reuse it. But honestly, for the brands, it's, let's be fair, it's the way now to save costs. And also, it uh, really allows to create uh, a number of relevant uh, journeys for the customer. And uh, that's it. I would like uh, to ask you, if you what you think of that, Christine. So some people would say very complex topic. We will not make uh, give all answers in 30 or 40 minutes. But uh, maybe we have some minutes over to give the room for you to ask questions, if you like about how to reconnect consumers with brands in such a complex world. Now, 
So no problem, because uh, coffee is also waiting. Uh, we are here all the time, today and tomorrow. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, to reach out to us. And thank you very much for your attendance about this topic. Thank you.